Hey there, this is Johnny Moneto, World of Warships. Uh, I've been uh, finding some people recently on the Help Me Discord server uh, who struggle with the tier 6 carrier gameplay. So I said I will do a video and put it on YouTube. Uh, I will narrate you through my decision making process. I will not comment on details how I drop exactly what I do. It's uh, more or less about my decision making process. What am I looking for? Why am I doing what I'm doing? Not exactly how I'm doing it. Not everything I do here is perfect. I also screw up sometimes. Please bear with me. Nobody's perfect. Uh, I'm also trying to improve, of course, every single time. So let's dive into the battle. Um, this is a uh, tier 6 slash 5 battle, I'm high tier. Uh, we can see that there are 5 battleships, 4 cruisers, 2 destroyers and 1 carrier per side. The destroyers usually spawn in mirror of each other. This means uh, we have one destroyer spawning at A and one at C. And so it will be the same for their team. One destroyer at A, one at C. Makes it easy for me to already know where they are. Usually I go and scout immediately, but I decide here to just drop a fighter. Actually, this is uh, I'm trying this out here. Um, how this works for me and how this works for my team. Because usually I don't do that, but... Yeah, well... The enemy goes right through. So now I'm looking for the destroyer and at the same time I will probably scout also whatever else I can find here. And there we go. In the meanwhile I have been spotted. When I go to this tactical screen, to the tactical map, uh, this means I relocate my carrier. You cannot see it in the replay, but this is what, what happens. This is the only way how you can relocate your carrier while you have planes in the air. Okay, this is too much AA for my liking. I haven't found the destroyer. Actually, I'm looking now if the destroyer is already way ahead of his fleet, if he's sneaky. Like our Fubuki is, if you look at the minimap, our Fubuki here is ahead of the two cruisers. Um, so I, it would be easy to spot, but I couldn't get that close. I didn't spot the destroyer. Now the destroyer gets spotted, not by me, but by our DD. So we know where it is. I think we have spotted everybody. At the same time, we notice at B, there is the other destroyer that didn't go to A, but went to B instead. And he got spotted there. There's a Leander on the way. I want to get rid of that destroyer. I do not want to have a destroyer in B. I'm lucky that I have a cruiser here with me. But if there's no cruiser coming, uh, you and your uh, uh, carrier must make sure that the destroyer is not having a good time here at B. Uh, he's isolated, he's alone, he's by himself. Currently he has a smoke, the reason why he's visible is that the Leander has hydro running. That is close enough. And that is of course the end of the Fubuki. But let's pretend the Leander is not here. I will go here and I will circle the smoke until the smoke is gone. Because this is such an important target that I need to get rid of him. There is absolutely no other choice. In the meanwhile... Or in the meantime, sorry, meanwhile, we lost our destroyer in, at sea and traded it for an enemy Leander. It's okay, but at least we got the B cap and now Leander can actually cap it. Or at least try to cap it. So what am I going to do now? I've uh, Now I'm a little bit free. There is no destroyer I have to deal with. Uh, on this side there is a cluster of ships which are not easy to strike. I'm actually looking now for lonely isolated targets. This Emerald could have been such a target, but I found her much too late. Too bad otherwise I might have gone for her. Uh, I decide to swallow the bitter pill and I will try to help my fleet here by chipping off damage of one of these battleships. I'm not 100% sure which of these battleships to strike until I actually finally get here and then I just strike the König. But the AA here is way too heavy for my liking. 
I will not be able to linger around here. Actually, it would have been... If you know that you have such heavy AA resistance here, because there are so many ships here, it might have been better to thin out the squadron, reduce the amount of planes to four, and just strike once, let two planes die, save the other four planes by sending them home to the carrier early. So that was not perfect, but this was uh, this was um, um, one of the strikes where I was kind of free to choose where I want to go. However, now this is not free to choose anymore. Uh, Emerald is coming to be, Dallas is coming to be. Here is still the AA cluster. If I go here, I will just do minimal damage and lose maximum amount of planes. Not a good choice. Uh, these battleships are currently not my prime target. It's better to attack these cruisers. I take rocket planes for this because it's easier to reliably hit cruisers. And I go for the Dallas. Now the Dallas has much better AA. Oh, good hit here. Very nice. Has much better AA than the Emerald. So why do I go for the Dallas? Because she has much better AA than the Emerald. I really want to get rid of her. Now I have a full squadron of rockets and I want to help my team to get rid of the Dallas because she's the much bigger threat to me. I think also she's in general the bigger threat to everybody compared to the Emerald. The Emerald is just the weaker ship. That's why I, I went for the difficult target here. Usually you want to go for the easy targets, but now in this case I decided to get rid of the bigger threat for my team first, even though if it means that I will lose a few ships more. Now again, I go for this side to strike here. I still look here, it still looks like there is a cluster here, so I want to have a look uh, if I can strike any of these battleships. Particularly I'm interested in this Piotr Veliki because she's pressuring our Anshan and I want to support my destroyer here. I can choose any of these three, but you see uh, the, the Julius, they're a little bit to the left, and the Piotr is kind of isolating itself from the herd. And this isolated target, especially when it's a battleship, this is what you want to strike. Because this is the easiest target that you can strike. Unfortunately, she's a little bit close to the border, so my planes bump around rather fast and unpleasant. On the bright side, she took so much damage before that two torps were enough for her. I just secured the kill and relief pressure for my Anshan, which is now free to return to the game. Since I still have so many torpedo planes left, I can now harass the Julius here. And I would usually go for the same target again, but she's turning into me, and then I will have to spend a long time in this AA bubble of two battleships. That's not a good idea. I want to always go for the unfair fight, so I actually decide to drop the other whole, uh, Julio as well. Now I know here is a target, low on health, and I could use the rocket planes to just kill that New Mexico, but she's already dead. So maybe it's better to go for this Devonshire here. You can see the Devonshire was spotted last year and she will go to the B cap. But then and just when I wanted to turn there, C cap gets contested, which means the Vesteroas is here. I will have to go now here because I need to get rid of the DD. The DD has the destroyer has the higher priority. The Devonshire still can wait. Okay. I messed up this drop completely. I was too close to the target to be actually able to hit it. So I have to turn around. Unfortunately, I provided enough spotting that my cruiser, the Devonshire, my friendly Devonshire, was able to hit her. And now it just takes me one strike to kill her. So this is what you want to do. You want to go for these destroyers even later in the game when, when they expose themselves. Still, you can strike them. Yeah, Get rid of them because they can torp your ships, they are a big threat to everybody. Now it's the Devonshire that I need to go, you see the, the flag is a little bit more heavy, of course. Since I have the rocket planes loaded, I will do the rocket plane strike. I'm getting awfully close to the Devonshire, I put in the reverse. Here I'm, I'm backing up to get behind the island as cover because the Devonshire is coming awfully close to me. Ah, too bad we lose the Anshan. 
And now I try to torp her. What I actually try with the torps now, now I'm actually going for the Devonshire all the time because she's getting very, very close to me and now actually I fight for my life. Yeah, if she gets too close to me and she can reliably shoot me, she will kill me. So now I'm just fighting for my life. I'm not trying to prevent capping here, I'm not trying to deal damage, I'm actually only fighting for my survival. I try to discourage her from turning into this gap here on the on the left side here this gap to come closer to me and actually spot me again but she decides to do that nevertheless so i can torp her if a ship becomes predictable she becomes much easier to torp because she wants to get somewhere and i can just put torps in her way if she's free on the ocean free to maneuver um she only evades the torps without having a certain goal where to go then she's much harder to drop unfortunately my other top drops were not so good so i couldn't finish her off i now go for the rocket planes to have more reliable damage again still fighting for my life Good hit. I, again i get help from my devonshire that's appreciated and I drop her again. And since I start a fire, it's enough for the kill. In the meantime, enemy carrier spotted me, and look at this, Koenig starts to hit me and already took a lot of my health away. Now I'm in a very bad position, because if I want to move forward, here's a Julio Cesare. I, but I cannot stay here because next time the carrier will see me again and the König will kill me. So I have to move forward and I have to get rid of this threat. That's why it's pretty self-explaining what I have to do now. I need to get rid of the Julius Cesare. Basically, when you play a tier 6 carrier, often the maps are so small and the enemy can rush you rather easily. So one of my goals always in a tier 6 carrier match is to clear one side, make sure one side is free of enemy ships, and this is then my safe zone. I try to create a safe zone for me, where I can go with my carrier if I'm being pressured, so that I don't die and can continue to have an impact on the game. Luckily, I Congo finishes the enemy battleship however i have to take two torps here because yeah well i try to maneuver on autopilot through the islands the autopilot is not the most efficient actually i have to be glad at this point that i'm not driving into the islands because the autopilot is also notorious for being able to do that and then i would have died here but i cannot afford to take much more damage i'm almost dead by now so the rest of the game is pretty easy. Uh, I run for my life. I drop myself some fighters here to, to intercept any incoming planes because actually it's not necessarily only the damage that the carrier makes, but also the spotting that the Königs can start to shoot at me. So now I'm going for the König uh, because dealing with the carrier will take much more time. It's, it's much harder to kill, so it's much easier to kill the battleship and try to defend myself from any airstrikes by dropping fighters here, one fighter squadron after another. Kindly note that a fighter squadron is always uh, only striking one enemy squadron. Afterwards she's finished and comes back home so that all the pilots can have a tea. Or a, a Saki in this case, because it's a Japanese carrier. Uh, so uh, every time your squadron shoots down something, you have to deploy a new fighter squadron. They are not really efficient, but it's the only thing I have. So I, I drop one squadron after the other. Additionally to my own uh, fighter protection that I have as a carrier. This drop in between is just done because I, I will not be able to turn around to the Koenig uh, without losing all my planes, so I just <laughs> the Ruyo here instead. And, uh, and that is that. The next drop is coming through. Fortunately, only not so much damage. That could have been my end already, but I survived barely on 2300 something. And I'm just running for my life. So this is uh, this is basically the game. Uh, I can tell you what will happen. We will kill the König. Uh, we will cap uh, C. No A. Sorry, we will cap A. 
And then at the end we will also kill the Ruyo and I will actually survive this game because I'm running fast enough. Um, I hope this gave you a good insight of what to do. Um, you, maybe you noticed, go for the DDs whenever you can, but if they fall back to seek shelter with their own fleet, uh, then don't chase them unless they are on really, really low health and you can really secure the kill with just one single strike of your planes. Yeah. Um, sometimes it is quite necessary that you do hit a certain target, like uh, the Fubuki at B, like the Dallas coming over, uh, like the Julio Cesare or the Piotr Wieliski. This, this is it kind of is self-explaining because I want to protect the B cap, I want to protect Leander, I want to protect my my uh, Anshan destroyer. This is teamwork that you do, um, and you can only hope that this teamwork is being rewarded if you help your team members to survive. Uh, then uh, your team members will help you win the game in the end. So this this is the basic Mokshu idea behind this. Kid. That's why I'm doing this. But when I'm getting pressured, of course, then I just fight for my survival. I, I fight the threat that is closest and biggest to me. Yeah, otherwise it's, uh, it's always... Uh, if, if you don't have an imminent target to score, uh, to, to strike, then kindly look for the target that poses the biggest threat to your team. And additionally, which is the easiest target to strike. If, uh, as you saw uh, here earlier on, there was a heavy AA cluster here. If I go in there, I will just lose a lot of plane and uh, I will planes, and I will not do a lot. So I went to the other side because these targets were much easier to strike. Yet I was able to help my team here just the same. Yeah. So I hope this was helpful. I wish you good luck on your venture and playing tier 6 carriers. I will maybe make another video where I am in a tier 8 battle just to give you an idea how that looks because this is the easy mode, this is only tier 6 and tier 5 where the AA is not so strong. And uh, against tier 8s, uh, yeah, uh, hopefully I can find an, one interesting battle in my archive to be able to make a video of that as well. Have a good one, I wish you all the best. Hakan Kandil.